Mr Howard, thank you very much for your time. It was such a traumatic period for Australia. As we stand today, how do you reflect on those events of 10 years ago? I think, first of all, of the terrible loss of life, and I, I will never forget uh, my interaction with the relatives and friends of, of those who died, the 88 Australians. They were a cross-section of, uh, of our Australian community and they were bewildered and grief-stricken, trying to draw a bit of comfort from each other and I did my best as Prime Minister uh, to offer what comfort I could to them. But it was a, a terrible deed uh, carried out by evil men, uh, most of whom have been brought to justice and many of whom have been executed by an Indonesian firing squad but it's uh, something that I recall, I will always recall, because uh, uh, it was uh, in many respects, uh, well, it was in every respect, uh, the worst um, uh, atrocity in taking the largest number of lives in a non-wartime activity uh, in Australia's history. So it was a terrible deed. And um, out of it, if you can draw anything positive, came an era of closer cooperation between Indonesia and Australia. We really had a couple of paths we could have de gone down, but we chose to go down the path of cooperation and friendship rather than the path of blame and finger pointing, and that was the right decision to have made. Mr Howard, amid all the grief and the trauma, there were, there were also incredible stories, weren't they, of, of humanity? of Australians volunteering, ex expats there and our services, the military, consular services and others working very effectively together. Yes, Kieran, I, I said at the time that out of this tragedy you saw those two aspects of the Australian character. You saw the strength and the stoicism and the toughness, as tough as gun metal when that's required, but you also saw incredible tenderness and compassion, uh, a nation collectively wrapping its arms around grief-stricken relatives and friends, uh, our military, our consular people, our medical services cooperating marvellously. In 37 hours, there was a medical evacuation of 66 badly injured people. Some of them went to Darwin, some of them went through Darwin, for example, to the Burns unit at the Royal Perth Hospital and others to different parts of Australia. And we, we airlifted Australians and others. It made no difference. Uh, it was a collective Australian effort, a mercy mission on behalf of Australia, which made me as Prime Minister at the time very proud of the uh, unique capacity of Australians to work together uh, spontaneously and generously at a time of challenge and crisis. And Mr Howard, despite it being the scene of one of our worst tragedies as a nation, it seems that Australia's love of, of Bali, Indonesia, but particularly Bali, it continues. We go there in enormous numbers every year, don't we? And that is a wonderful thing. Uh, Australians didn't blame the Balinese. The Balinese are not fanatics. They're, they're quiet, peaceful, lovable people. And despite the fact that so much grief uh, was inflicted uh, in Bali. Despite all of that, we have gone back. It's almost as if Bali remains part of Australia. And that at the time made the uh, atrocities so much more painful. But it has meant that in the years that have gone by, we have returned. We still like the Balinese. And, and out of this tragedy, there were new levels of cooperation between our security services the development of the interfaith dialogue, which brings together Christians, Muslims, Jews and Buddhists. It's a wonderful thing in our region. The closeness that Australia and Indonesia now share, much closer than they were at the time of the tragedy. So from that awful uh, atrocity, that terribly evil deed, our two police forces cooperated magnificently. The Australian Federal Police under Mick Kelty uh, and the Indonesian effort led by General Pastika, who Kilti had met almost 20 years earlier at a training course in Canberra. Uh, the fact that the man who led the Australian 
Federal Police Investigation Unit, Graham Ashton, had been in Jakarta, could speak Bahasi. He's now the Assistant Commissioner of the Victoria Police. The contribution of the Australian Police Forces in the uh, chasing down the, uh, the, uh, the face fit uh, uh, images that helped catch many of the culprits. All of these things uh, spoke of a level of cooperation between Australia and Indonesia that has really exemplified the association our two countries have developed and that is a great legacy that's come out of this awful tragedy which will always be a moment of heartache, uh, a remembrance, a heartache uh, for so many Australians. I've spoken to a number of diplomats who were based in Indonesia at the time and they've spoken of your contribution and your wife Jeanette's contribution in comforting the loved ones and families of, of the victims. How do you reflect on that contribution, that grief counselling contribution that you played at the time? Well, we remember it very vividly and we remember many of the people, we remember the faces, we remember some of the names. Uh, it was a time of intense grief. We just felt heartbroken. Uh, here, here was a group of, uh, of, of, of Australians, a cross-section of the community. Their children, their husbands, their wives, their boyfriends, girlfriends, brothers, sisters, just friends. Uh, they were doing the most natural thing in the world. They were having a good time. And then without justification, their lives were blown away. And in many cases, people, although they didn't lose their lives, they lost limbs and they were horribly wounded and horribly burnt. And we just did uh, as any two Australians would hope and try and do in a situation like that, just offer personal comfort, try as best we could uh, to identify with their grief, not of course being able to feel the, in any way the pain they were feeling. And we hoped that at the time we were adequate to the task. And in a situation like this, all you can do is be natural. If somebody wants a hug, you give them a hug. If somebody is perhaps more reserved and a handshake will do, well, you just have a handshake. Uh, you talk about their loved one, you ask about when you last saw them and all those things, because they want to talk. In a situation like that, people want to talk all the time very understandably about who they've lost. And we just did our best. And uh, uh, we hoped that it was adequate to the task. And uh, I remember at the time, we, I, Immediately after the attack, I, I not only went myself, but I went uh, took John Anderson and Simon Crean, who was then the leader of the opposition, because this was a time for bipartisanship. Uh, I involved the opposition leader in the discussions I had with all of the officials uh, in, uh, in Bali uh, the night that I arrived, three or four days after the attack, so that in every sense it was a united Australian response. Mr Howard, thank you very much. As we commemorate the, uh, the 10th anniversary of the Bali bombing, such an awful time for our nation, we appreciate your reflections and we hope and pray that something of that magnitude never happens again. I think we can all do that, Kieran, but we can only hope to see that realised if we continue to maintain a tough stance against terrorism and a vigilance against the sort of extremism that brought about this terrible deed.